Senator, I want to look back at the election. You won handily. I remember all year long people saying, oh, he's too extreme. He's not real. He's a bad candidate. Did anyone come up to you and say, sorry, we got this completely wrong? No, I, I, no, it's a, I have a disproportionately large number of uh, uh, people who supported me who I didn't realize had supported me. Uh, but, you know, the worst, the worst part, Hugh, is that uh, Sherrod Brown's never called me uh, to concede. What? And, and never called to concede and closed down all of his offices around the state and in D.C. So, so uh, we're going to have to pick up a slack of an enormous amount of constituent services that are going unattended. Yeah, I know you're going to be able to do that, Bernie Marino. Tell me a little bit about your advice to Governor DeWine on replacing J.D. Vance so that you're going to be the senior senator from Ohio. Uh, If J.D. resigns on the day before the inauguration, you're sworn in on January the 3rd, you get to be the senior senator from Ohio. Who do you want to be the junior senator from Ohio? Well, somebody who uh, is willing to work hard, somebody who can raise money, somebody who's absolutely uh, committed to the America First agenda. And somebody who's uh, willing to just put it all on the field because, you know, the way the way I won, he was very simple. It was good, old-fashioned, grit, determination, hard work. And that's what voters expect because you, if you work hard as a candidate, they know that, you, that you'll work hard as a senator. So we need somebody who's willing to do that. Now, you came in with Tim Sheehy and Dave McC- It's a great class, right? There are a lot of new faces that have come in. And, and of course, Governor Justice from West Virginia when you went to the orientation, did you learn anything or was it kind of, really, it moves that slowly? No, I learned a ton, actually. Uh, and don't forget Jim Banks, by the way. Great consultant. Oh, Jim Banks, a yeah. good friend. Yeah, Jim Banks. Yep. Uh, so, so we know there's, there's a lot of important things that were covered in orientation. Uh, the Senate has a great staff, by the way. Uh, extremely organized, extremely meticulous. Uh, they had a whole 200-page book that we had to read beforehand that uh, answered 90% of the questions that, that, that I had. Uh, but, you know, learning and understanding how the machine works is extremely important. And so now we're in the, uh, in the uh, phase of hiring a staff. Uh, we're going to have the greatest staff in the history of the United States Senate. Uh, we got past the leadership vote, which was fantastic. And now it's about confirming President Trump's nominees. That, that's job one for the 119th Congress. Now, Senator-elect Marino, the key thing is, which committees do you end up on? I don't know if they've been assigned yet. I don't know if you put in a, a prom bid card. I don't know how it works. What, what's going on there? So you send in a uh, request to the majority leader and to the committee on committees. And so they look at, you know, committee membership. I put on there why I thought I should be on certain committees based on my background and experience. Because I want to add value. I want to make certain uh, if I'm on a committee that I'm adding value to the American people. And, uh, and obviously the most important thing to me, Hugh, is just to do a good job. And I think I can do a good job on commerce, on banking, on homeland, on budget. And there's a, those are where I think I can add the most value. Now, I know that uh, Doug Burgum was out on the campaign trail, the incoming Secretary of the Interior and Chair of the uh, National Energy Council. Ohio's got a lot of energy, a lot of natural gas, a lot of fracking going on there. Do you want to be with oversight on the development of Ohio's energy resources? Yeah, absolutely. And Mike Lee is going to be the chairman of that committee. He's going to do a great job. Look, at the end of the day, we need to be an energy superpower because uh, fossil fuels are the underlying uh, material in almost everything we use. It's not just electricity. This is everything that we use in our day-to-day lives. And we have a thousand years of natural gas in this country. We have to make certain that we're tapping into that, tapping that wealth, getting it out of the ground, and making this country an energy superpower. That's what's going to do two things, lower our deficit and increase our GDP, uh, which is the only uh, path forward to have a budget that's sustainable in this nation. Did you talk about, with uh, Senator Thune, the incoming majority leader, the process for getting the budget reconciliation done, because it's the key to unlocking everything, and it's got to be done first. The budget resolution's got to be done first. Usually the Senate settles in and the House settles in, and they dicker around when their parties are controlling the same. They're not going to have but two- or three-seat margin in the House. Do you think you can get it done in timely fashion and the trailing bills, which matter so much? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the huge advantages of having Senator Thune as a majority leader, aside from the fact that he's a really great human being and, co- and a great communicator and a great representative of the Senate, is that he worked in the House. So he knows how the House works. He's building a great relationship with the Speaker. 
He understands the machine really well, as I said early, er, earlier. So uh, I think we're going to get a lot of things done. Look, the Democrats opened the door. They showed us what was possible with reconciliation, and we'll take that to the next level to get the agenda of President Trump done. Now, in terms of uh, the president, have you talked with him since the election? No, I talked to J.D. quite a bit. You know, President Trump, I leave him alone. He's extraordinarily busy. Uh, I know that uh, he's very happy for my victory. I'm ecstatic about his victory. And unless I need something urgent, uh, he's got a lot of things to do. So J.D. and I talk quite a bit. Obviously, we're good friends. And uh, we, we're all very excited to get to work on January 3rd. You know, the first time I met you and Senator Vance was on a debate stage. And soon to be Vice President Vance and you were, were mixing it up pretty good. I mean, politely, a gentleman, but, I mean, you were sparking. How did the friendship develop after you began running against each other? Well, we knew each other before then. I, I always point out to J.D. that he launched his campaign after I did. Uh, but the reality is, look, uh, we had a spirited campaign. We were never disrespectful to each other. Uh, J.D. and I are very ide- ideologically aligned. You know, he was an outsider of this world as I was. He understands you the necessity to rebuild our working class, to rebuild the middle class in this country is job one, to reindustrialize is not only important economically, it's important from a national security perspective. I'm gonna be hyper-focused on the auto industry. If you look at what we've done there, we've shipped about 3 million units of production to Canada and Mexico. That 3 million units of production has devastated, loss has devastated communities that you care about, Warren, Ohio, Youngstown, Canton, Akron, Lorraine, uh, Toledo, Dayton, those communities were gutted when we made that decision. So we need to bring, we need to bring um, an American automobile manufacturing renaissance back to this country. And J.D. and I are 100 percent aligned on that. Lordstown and Packard Electric, it would be good to have the lines running again. Let me close this way, uh, uh, Senator-elect Marino. Where are you going to live? Are you going to live in Maryland, D.C., or where you should live, which is Virginia? <laughs> no, I have a uh, – my daughter lived in D.C., so we had, uh, I'd gotten her a condo a couple of years ago. It's in Shaw, so I'll stay there. It's 10 minutes from the uh, Senate office building, so I'll, I'll stay in my condo, uh, but I'm going to come back to Ohio, obviously, on weekends and at least one week a month and travel the entire state. So my travel journey of the state's not over. I want to meet people and constituents, understand what they care about, so that will inform me for what I do in D.C. Well, congratulations and a happy Thanksgiving. When you came in early, I knew it was going to be a good night, and I am so happy that Ohio's got a great new senator in Bernie Marino. Thank you, Senator-elect Marino, for joining me. Keep coming back. 